Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. As you can probably tell, I don't have on any makeup today and I've zoomed you guys in a little bit closer. And that's because we're going to be trying out all the new Pacifica makeup that just launched online at Ulta. When I seen this, I definitely wanted to try it out because Pacifica, as far as I knew, was just skincare. Like, there's a lot of their cleansers that you guys have probably seen in my empties video that I really like. Um, some of their moisturizers. And I do really like a lot of their skincare, so I definitely wanted to give their makeup a try. Um, just like their skincare, they, this is vegan and cruelty free, so if you're someone who's looking for a vegan vegan and cruelty free makeup. Um, as far as I checked everything when I read all this was vegan and cruelty free. I did purchase all mine like I said online at Ulta. Um, so I will read a little bit about the products as we're going on and trying them out. So yeah, we're just going to go ahead and get started and um, just to give this a fair shot, I did use my Spashbox Photo Finish Primer and Light. I just feel like 9 times out of 10, everything works with this. And to put on the foundation today, the only clean foundation brush I had was the It Cosmetics Airbrush Smoothing Foundation Brush. And then we're just going to be using my favorite Eco Tools sponge. I usually do like foundations better with sponges, but like I said, since it's a first impression, we'll try both of them. So. Um, first off, the foundation is $16 and it does come in a total of 30 shades. I do just have two shades here. I have 34 NL, which I believe is what we're going to use today, and then a 33 NL. I did order for a total of four shades. However, the bottle, as you guys are going to see, is uh, glass. So it busted, but also was really cool about just resending me the two that I busted. So yeah, it does come in a glass bottle, which I like because I don't like, you know, the further we can get away from plastic, the better. But it does also come with a pump, which is really nice. Um, so it's just easy to use, but I don't necessarily think that this would be great to travel with since, like I said, two did arrive broken. So like I said, just really quick, I'm just going to read kind of the... Um, Claims for this, it says that for immediate results, you see flawless, seamless coverage. Your skin feels more clean. You've got a more radiant, healthy-looking skin. Pore-free appearance and vibrant, and it's supposed to last day to night. It says it has coconut water, which is supposed to be balancing. Hyaluronic acid is supposed to support skin moisture. And then rose leaf extract has antioxidant properties. I'll be honest, usually my skin doesn't love coconut or rose products, so I am a little bit nervous, but what I'll do is I'm going to wear this throughout the day, and then down in the description box, I'll let you guys know how it wore throughout the day um, to see if it lasts all day. But it's supposed to not have any like talc, free of silicone, parabens, petroleum, dry alcohols, and a bunch of other stuff. So it says after six weeks, your skin's supposed to look more healthy and skin feels smoother. So 93% of participants agreed in clinical studies. So uh, we're going to go ahead and, like I said, get started. I'll probably start out um, on this side, and we'll use a brush. So I have, like I said, I haven't even tried this out yet, so I have no idea. Okay, so it is kind of, I don't know if you guys can see, it's not super runny. Um, oh, my skin, I do have oily skin, but I have started incorporating, I think that, that'll be close enough for today. I have started incorporating a retinol into my skincare routine, and it has got my face to peeling and my lips really dry. And I don't know if I need like a better moisturizer when I'm using that, but if you guys know of anything to help with like the peeling that comes with using a retinol, please let me know because it has been like, like so bad. Like I almost can't wear foundations on some days, but it's definitely looked a little bit better. So this does have a scent. I mean, I wouldn't say it's like the strongest scent I've ever smelled in a foundation, but it is definitely like as I'm putting it on my face, I can definitely smell it. So it doesn't smell bad, but. It's definitely not my favorite smell when it comes to foundations. So, so far I think it looks pretty good. Like the color, maybe like a little bit, a little bit yellow, but it's not bad. I don't feel like it's blending in the best with this brush. It might just be this brush, but um, it's just, I mean, I don't think it looks terrible, but I definitely feel like the coverage is pretty good. Um, I'm actually going to switch to a sponge with this foundation because I feel like with this brush it's kind of leaving um, brush strokes. So I'm just going to switch over to the sponge. Also, if you guys could hear Abby in there drinking water, I'm sorry. She's just really restless. She's not, she's 16 years old, so she's been having a hard time um, here lately. Um, so, like I said, I think. I do have a little bit of peeling going on down here, and it does like really grab onto that. But I don't, again, that's not really necessarily the foundation's fault. But if you do have like dry, flaky skin, it definitely might cling um, to those areas. So that's something that I would definitely be cautious of. But again, like I said, that peeling has nothing to do with this foundation, it has to do with that retinol. 
So that was one pump that I put on my hand and I'd say that about half of my face. Um, and like I said, I definitely feel like the sponge kind of presses it into my skin a little bit better. So I would say coverage wise with the sponge, I would definitely say this is a pretty good medium coverage. Um, I'll build it up, like I said, down here where I've got some breakouts and we'll see if it builds up to full coverage. But I mean, I would be happy with this coverage. Like I said, I definitely say high medium, but so far, I think it looks really good. It definitely has more of a natural finish to it. Um, I thought it was gonna be like a little bit more matte, but it definitely has a really pretty natural finish. Okay, so right down here where I do have a little more acne, I'm just gonna see if I can just build this up just to get a little bit more coverage. So. Yeah, I definitely feel like it builds up. I don't, I don't think I necessarily still say that this is full, full coverage. But I definitely feel like it's a pretty high medium coverage because like I said, I can still see some like redness on my nose as well. Let's see if we can build up there. But for the most part, I would be happy with this coverage. Like I think that overall it looks pretty good. So, so as far as the finish, I definitely feel like it looks like I am a little bit shiny, which I definitely don't think it's going to hold very well my oily skin, but I did notice too, just like right here underneath my eyes where I did just bring it under there as well. It is kind of creasing already in those lines, so it makes me worry a little bit about my smile lines right here, but like I said, it blended out really nicely. I'd say high medium coverage. It hasn't like oxidized or gotten any darker or anything, which is really nice. Um, I just, like I said, I do worry you know, a little bit about that. So it didn't, I definitely agree with the claims about your pores. Like honestly, this is probably one of the prettiest foundations over my pores. Like I can't see them at all. Um, so I really like that. Yeah, but overall I think it's really pretty. The only thing that, like I said, is um, I do feel like any dry areas um, where that retinol is kind of dried out my skin, it's really clinging to and accentuating that. So if you have dry skin, just kind of keep that in mind. All right, now for the concealer. The concealer does come in a little plastic bottle and it does have a small doe foot applicator. And this is $13 online at Ulta. Again, it's vegan and cruelty free. It says that it's supposed to be a full coverage lasting concealer. These uses clean ingredients to deliver buildable seamless coverage that leaves a natural finish. So it's good for under eye circles, imperfections, and anything you may want to hide. Silicone free formula with a smooth, a smooth applicator for easy use. So again, um, looking for full coverage. It says this is available in 12 shades. So I did get the shade 20 um, in F, which was 20 neutral F. So just, I'm not sure how much concealer to kind of put underneath there. So what I'm gonna, actually I'm just gonna, I'm gonna blend this out because I don't know how fast this sets or anything, but because it does feel a little bit thicker underneath my under eye. So I'm just going to blend that out and we'll see how it goes. So it actually blends out really well. Like that hardly took any effort at all and I definitely feel like it blended out really nicely. So, well that's really pretty. I don't know if I'd consider that full coverage. I would definitely say that's more of like a, a medium coverage underneath the eyes. Um, it's not very brightening. That was the lightest shade that they had. Um, so if you have very light skin, I don't really know how well this is gonna work for you. Okay, so I like that concealer. I think it's definitely more medium coverage though. I wouldn't say it's full coverage. It is starting to crease just, just a little bit underneath my eyes, so I'll probably blend it out and then try to set it with that powder, which I do have from them as well. This is the Pacifica um, Cherry Velvet Matte Translucing Powder. I did believe I've seen a luminous powder on here as well, but I did pick up the matte one. Uh, this is $12, so this basically just says it's supposed to be, um, don't have a melt away day. So this is supposed to be matte, which I'm excited about. Um, because I definitely will probably try to set my entire face with this. Um, this is kind of what the packaging looks like. I think this lifts off maybe. Okay. Yep. Yeah, okay. It just pulls up. I think Too Faced used to have a, their powders like this. It pulls up. So I don't know if there'll be any flashback from this or not. But I'm just going to take my sponge, which is what I usually do. And just kind of start. Oh. Okay. That smells very cherry. Ooh. That's definitely strong. So right away though, that really mattified everything. I feel like even looking at your in the viewfinder compared to this side, already in my eye, that really mattifies everything. So I'm just gonna set my entire face with this because I wanna give this foundation like a, okay. 
Uh, I really like this powder. <laughs> it definitely, like I said, it mattified like everything compared to, yeah, I can definitely see it. Look how shiny this is and how matte this side is. I almost dipped my sponge into my highlighter. <laughs> so, this is going to. But the cherry scent is very, very strong. Like, um, almost overpowering, but I think if you like cherry scented stuff, you will probably like this powder. I'm just gonna set my nose as well. Okay, so I am really, really impressed with my, that powder because like, I feel like everything was looking really shiny and that powder just, I, my skin looks super matte, which I, I like that. They do have a luminous one, so if you don't like like matte powders, you might try out the luminous one, but I I really like that powder. I'm really excited to try this out with other foundations that are like really dewy. So yeah, I'm really excited to try this one out. So this, definitely my favorite product so far. I like the foundation and everything, and if it holds up well with that powder, then I do like it. I like the coverage. I think that everything so far looks really, really good. I probably would have gone with a lighter concealer underneath the eyes just because it looks like the exact same um, colors my skin tone, but yeah, so yeah, that, that powder, yeah, by far, if you're gonna try one thing out so far, I definitely try out that powder. So, so, so far, like I said, I love this. It's been a long time since I found a powder I loved as much as my Viseart one. So, if this powder holds up, then good. If I do break out after this, though, I'll kind of have to swap out, seeing if it was the foundation, the concealer, and stuff like that. But it does have a very strong cherry scent, so just keep that in mind. But this is the Pacifica Alighten Radiance Powders, and I believe on here when I was reading, this is eighteen dollars. Um, it's a cheek palette, um, cherry infused mineral color highlights and blushes of pink, natural, and cherry tones. So um, I don't, yeah. So I think that one looks like a bronzer to me, though. So that's what we're gonna use it as. This is the packaging. So, this this doesn't smell as strong. This actually kind of smells like sunscreen, but it doesn't smell nearly as cherry and strong as that Pacifica one. So I'm gonna take the shade Desert Matte, which is this bronzy shade. There's a little bit of kick up from these powders, and I'm gonna use this as a bronzer because it definitely looks like a bronzer to me. So I'm just gonna bronze my forehead. Okay, that's definitely very pigmented. Okay, so I do feel like that bronzer is just a little bit hard to blend out. I kind of feel like it looks like I've got a line right here, but it's like the more I try to sit there and buff it out, it's kind of starting to pick up my foundation and stuff right there. So I don't really want to buff anymore, but I don't know if that's where my skin is so dry and just like all the powders are just like sticking to all that dryness, but I do like the bronzer. It just was a little bit harder to blend out um, that I would like. So I'm also going to use that blush from that palette, and that one is in the shade Sunset Matte. I'm just going to use this BH Cosmetics brush. This is a really pretty color. At least it looks like a really pretty color to me. So it is matte as well. So, okay, very pigmented. I definitely feel like when I swatched these, I didn't think they were going to be as pigmented as they were. But they're definitely very pigmented. So, but I kind of feel like, again, though, that blush is really hard to blend out. Let's do a fiber brush and try to blend out that blush a little bit because it's not blending out very well with that blush brush. Okay, so definitely if you go in with this, again, I'm not sure if it's where my cheeks are so dry, um, but definitely dip your brush in there and then I would kind of do like a small tapping motion and then come in and blend it because when I kind of started here and then tried to blend before tapping, it really just stuck right there and it is quite hard to blend even with this duo fiber blush and this is a little bit more blush than I would normally wear, but um, I mean, they're really pigmented though. Like I was really surprised because I did swatch these. You guys will see the swatches though after or while I'm filming. But when I swatched these, I felt like they were just a little bit not as pigmented, but they're definitely picks up a lot with a brush. So just kind of be careful. But I do feel like I said, once they blend out, they're pretty. They're just a little bit harder to blend and definitely intense. So, all right, we're gonna go in with the highlighter and I'm gonna be going in with the shade Glimmer, which is the lighter shade right here. And I'm just using my Anastasia brush and I'm going to go in very lightly with this as well because 
So, yeah. Again, again, I feel like it picks up a lot with the brush. Like the swatches with your fingers just did, doesn't do it justice. So yeah, that's really <laughs> that's really intense. I, I I'm I'm just surprised. Like, I'm really surprised because it's like when I swatched these, I wasn't s super impressed, you know. But I definitely, like I said, would go in with a light hand with all of this. That's what I'm doing is I'm just going in and slowly building up everything. But yeah, I think that highlighter is really pretty. So I really like the shade. I think that rose gold shade would look really pretty on deeper skin tones. So, okay, yeah. So, so far, so good. I definitely feel like the highlighter blended out a little bit better than the blush and bronzer did. Something that I do really like about this highlighter that I want to mention is like it doesn't look like there's tons of shimmer in it. It just like there's no shimmer. It looks like it sits on my skin. It just looks really pretty. So, oh my gosh, I can see how much blush I have on in the viewfinder and it looks really funny. But um, yeah, so really like this pot as well. Just definitely would go in and do like I said the tapping motion and then blending instead of just stamping it and then trying to blend it out because. The bronzer and highlight, uh, bronzer and blush was a little bit harder to blend, but the highlighter I really like. It just there's no glitter or shimmer, but it still like looks wet. It's really really pretty. So yeah, so so far so good. Sorry, my camera stopped recording. So for the eyeshadow palette, like I said, I picked up the Pacifica Natural Minerals Love Stone, and this is twenty one dollars. They did come out with a purple palette as well, but I just this one appealed to me more. Um, it says it's supposed to have nine magical crystal inspired eyeshadows and three highlighters to help your aurora glow plus major crystal info inside to help you call your own to help you call in your own crystal superpowers so i actually think that this idea is really cool i don't love the packaging but this is really cool because when me and my friend Gina went to Boone this past year we got to do the thing where they went down in the mines and like you get to find the like little gems or crystals whatever mine aren't polished um, I want to get a thing and do it myself, but I actually do have some in here. Like I've got this one, which I believe is aquamarine, so positive and cleansing. So I don't know. They're really pretty. I have, I know I have tiger's eye in here, but I can't remember which one that, that one is. Um, we've got, is this lapis? Lapis, the blue one. So I've just got like a bunch in here and a black tourmaline I believe is that what that one is it's got like black in it so yeah these this was really fun the whole like when we did that but I just want to show you guys that because that's kind of why I got this the only thing that concerns me is when I was swatching these they were all very iridescent the shimmer shades were which I get if you're kind of inspired by these that's kind of like what the idea that you would get so I'm excited to see how they work on the eyes though so we're gonna go ahead and get started and I actually want to start out with the shade rose quartz which is like looks like this peachy shade to me and I'm just going to actually use this in my crease and to kind of set my entire lid so I, I will be honest I don't want to judge these too strongly because my eyelids are so dry right now that um I feel like nothing no eyeshadow looks good on them but it's not their fault it's that I don't know it's like I don't use that retinol anywhere near my eyes but like my lids and everything still dry like dry out really bad so but like I said, when I swatched that face palette by them with that bronzer and blush, I wasn't impressed. But then like I said, they were super pigmented when we used them with a brush. That's why I feel like swatching stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that that just represents the color, which I think a lot of people feel that way now. But I don't know, some people still, some people don't. So I think I actually want to take the shade Amnith. Amnith? I don't, I don't know. I don't really... I'll be honest, I don't really follow any of that, this stuff, like the stones and stuff, but it does pick up a lot of product on the brush, if you guys can see, so I'm just gonna tap it off, so there's a little bit of kick up, but I'm just kind of putting this more precisely in my crease, and again, it does kind of, it is kind of skipping right here where it's really dry, but it is blending really nicely out here on the outer corner, so it almost kind of looks a little bit more blue, I feel like. Now that I've blended it out, it kind of looks a little more, a little more blue. So I'm actually going to take a little bit of this red shade, this garnet, garnet shade, and I'm going to be taking this Beach Cosmetics brush, number eight brush. I think this comes in like the carnival section, and this I am going to put just here on the outer corner, and then I'm just going to blend it up into that per first purple shade that we put down. So they definitely blend out really nicely. I think that they take just a little bit of building up where they do just kind of 
blend out. They kind of remind me of some of like the Maybelline eyeshadows, like where they're they blend out not to nothing, but they can blend out to nothing, and you kind of have to build them up and build them up. So they're not like my favorite eyeshadows I've ever worked with, but like I said, I do feel like they're really easy to blend. Like they blend out really easy. You just kind of got to build them up, I think, to kind of get your get the intensity that you want. Since I'm trying to use as many colors as I can, I'm going to actually take the shade Emerald right here and I'm going to use my Sigma F70 brush. Okay, so again, see when I swatched these with my finger, I felt like they looked very like sheer, but they do apply, I feel like, very well with the brush. But there's just a little bit of fallout, so I am kind of just going in and just kind of tapping it on. And then just taking the same brush and just kind of blending those other shades together. So that's a really pretty shade. That is really pretty. I like that. So yeah, so far, like I said, I, I was worried. I was really worried because of how they swatched, but they apply really, really nicely with an, with a brush. Okay, so, so far, I really like this eyeshadow palette. Again, I'm really glad that I didn't kind of go off of my review on the swatches because they swatched not very good, as you guys will probably see, but I want to, like I said, use this blue shade. It's not going to really match, but I'm going to put this on the lower lash line because, like I said, I do think it's a really pretty color. So, actually, let's go ahead and highlight the inner corners, and I'm going to take the shade Moonstone to highlight my inner corners. That's, that's really pretty. Of course, I think Opal would have been really pretty, too. I think that's really pretty. I actually just got a stiffer brush so I can kind of pick up that color and then I'm just going to try to pack it on. Yeah, it definitely picks up better with a brush like this. That blue in my lower lash line, if you guys can tell, but I do want to blend it out with this lighter blue aquamarine. So I'm just going to pick it up with that brush I highlighted with and Overall, I think the eyeshadows turned out really good. The only shades, between the shades that I used, the only shade that I used that I felt like was just a little bit eh was the aquamarine. It was just a little bit more powdery and I felt like it just kind of, when I was trying to blend, use it to blend that dark blue out, it was just kind of like phew, powder going everywhere. That's the only one that I used today that I felt that way with. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put eyeliner on mascara and do my brows and put on something on my lips and then I'll be right back to give you guys my final review. Alright guys, so just to round everything up, as far as what I thought of everything, the foundation, so far so good. Now that I've set it with the matte powder, I thought that it was a very, in my opinion, dewy for me. Um, seeing as I'm someone who usually likes a matte foundation, I did find it just to be a little bit dewier than I liked. But I thought the coverage was amazing, I thought it blended out amazing, I thought how well it just glided over the pores and made it look like I didn't even have any was amazing. I really like this. I like the color match. I actually think that it was pretty good once I blended it down my neck and everything. So, so far, like I said, so good. I definitely feel like, though, I would set this, like I said, every time with the powder my entire face because, like, right now, I like the look. Everything's really nice and matte. So, in the comments down below, I will leave you guys, or in the description box, I'll tell you guys how it wore throughout the day, how to look at groceries and things like that because it's supposed to snow really bad. So, so far, so good. Loving the foundation. The concealer, like I said, I want to try it a little bit more. I was kind of on the fence about it. I thought the coverage was more medium coverage. Again, it was very kind of dewy looking underneath there, which at the moment where like that retinol's kind of dried out everything, I liked, but I'm not sure how well I would like this, like if my skin was back to like its normal, you know, normal self. Um, but so this one I definitely want to try out a little bit more. Now, the powder was by far my favorite thing out of this entire collection. It is a very scented, as well as like the foundation was scented, but not nearly as bad as this powder. Like, you can definitely smell it. Now that it's on my skin, I can't smell it anymore now that everything's kind of sunk in. But like, you guys seen how quick it mattified everything on this side of my face and then compared to me showing you guys this side of my face. So, I think this is a great powder as long as it holds up throughout the day. It's been a long time, like I said, since I have found a powder that compares to my Viseart powder. So, I'm really hoping that this holds up my foundation stuff throughout the day as well. I, again, I'm going to be trying this out. Um, as far as the um, little um, 
Radiance Powders palette. I did, like I say, find that the bronzer and the blush were both a little bit hard to blend, but I think it's like when I did on this cheek, I kind of tapped it where I wanted it and then blended. It was a lot easier to blend, so I definitely feel like if you like these colors, then definitely kind of use that method when you're using these two. And also, it's very deceiving, because like when you swatch these, they don't come off very pigmented, like I mentioned, but when you go in with a brush and then apply these, they're very pigmented. It's the same thing with the highlighter. Like when I swatched this on the back of my hand, I was like, oh my gosh, I was like, this highlighter is going to suck, but it's probably one of my all-time favorite highlighters now. It doesn't have any glitter or any shimmer in it, so I don't know how they get it to look like so wet, but it's so beautiful. Like I said, this one's just, of course, too deep for my skin tone, um, but I love these. Definitely, like I said, the swatches do not do this justice, and I have to say the same for the eyeshadow palette. I definitely feel like when I swatched these, I was very disappointed. Um, but they perform really well with a brush. I definitely feel like the matte shades, like I was saying, they're kind of like some of the Maybelline ones where they can kind of blend out very sheer. So you do have to build them up as you guys seen. I went in a couple of times. But so far, like I said, so good. I, I The shimmer shades, especially this green and this blue, again, swatching them, the pigmentation sucked. But actually applying them with a brush, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm very impressed. I am a little bit nervous to see how long these last on the eyes though. Again, what I'll do is down in the description box, I'll leave that down below. I didn't prime my eyes or anything today though, but again, they're just so dry. So I might actually try this out some more before I like really judge the wear time where I can properly put on a cons um, or an eyeshadow primer and everything. But yeah, so these were the only one that I did feel was a little bit crumbly. Like this one I did highlight my inner corner and these kind of have the same like texture but yeah I mean overall like I actually like it I could definitely see how a lot of people would say it's not very pigmented on um, initial swatching it but again I think you need to apply it on your eyes I mean you guys see they are very pigmented on my eyes and yeah I do like I said I do really like this I was surprised but I am glad that like I said I didn't immediately think to like you know what I'm saying not even try it out just based on the finger swatches so yeah overall I am really happy to see what other makeup Pacific is going to come out with because so far Everything has worked for me. You know, I am on the fence, like I said, a little bit with the concealer, but again, I just, I'm so impressed. I like the undertone of this foundation. It was really nice and neutral, and yeah, if you guys would like to see maybe like a very in-depth review, like after I've worn this for a couple weeks, how my, it's my skin's reacting to it and stuff, just let me know, because I'd be happy to do that. But yeah, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.